Indonesia is the largest island nation in the world. It is surrounded by the Pacific and Indian Oceans, with the equator running through its center. It also has the fourth largest population for an island nation. There were over 100 ethnic groups living on its 18,000 islands. It's a beautiful holiday destination and a kaleidoscope of Asian cultures in its bustling cities and tranquil countryside. It's an exotic land that is home to the largest Muslim population in the world. Diving instructor Kerlut Paramarta arrives at the diving club at 7 a.m. as usual. He normally doesn't work on weekends, but he has something special planned for today. He's also an underwater hunter. The crashing waves seem to call him out to sea. is a pearl among the country's 18,000 islands. The steep hills and nearby rich variety of sea life make it an exotic destination. It's also a surfing paradise and an ideal destination for underwater exploration. Two Chinese girls arrive at the diving club today, hoping to earn a diving license during their short vacation. Paramarta teaches them the basics of diving for their first diving lesson. It takes at least four days to obtain a basic diving license. These girls have no experience, so they will first train in a swimming pool. Paramarta will teach them how to breathe and keep their balance underwater. After the first day of intensive training, he takes the girls to the beach to relax. Bali is most beautiful by the sea at dusk. Tomorrow, they will dive in the sea for the first time. Wow. 
，就不知道明天会怎么样了。我非常期待明天。明天再见。Girls are ready to begin diving in the sea, but the further the boat moves from the shore, the more nervous they become. Marta double checks their equipment and goes over the hand signals one last time. Up, wake up. Is something is wrong? Yeah. And then looks me. What? Two, three. Yeah. It's okay. This is the first time the girls have dived in the sea, and they are both excited and scared. Luckily, Para Marta is an experienced instructor. He patiently helps them to relax. After a short break, they start to dive. Accompanied by their instructor, the girls see the magical world under the sea for the first time. It seems like a dream. They will never forget this moment. At dusk, Paramarta is finished with work for the day and leaves the girls to play soccer with his son. His son is proud of his father and also wants to be a diving instructor when he grows up. Indonesia is located at the junction of the Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean, and Eurasian tectonic plates in the Pacific Ring of Fire. There are more than 500 known volcanoes in the area, including 177 that are active. The Tungku Ban Per Ahu is a very active volcano that erupted 30 years ago leaving volcanic ash that is rich in nutrients and acidic, making it ideal for growing coffee. Farmers living in this area began large-scale coffee production many years ago and are renowned for the quality of their product. There is a rich aroma in the morning air. Local coffee grower Marman begins making the world's most unique type of coffee.
kills a chicken, cuts it into pieces, and feeds it to these wild civets, which he recently bought from a hunter for a high price. Civets live in dense shrub, in tropical rainforests, and subtropical broad-leaved evergreen forests. It's a fierce animal that is a little bigger than a domestic cat. When they eat the mature coffee beans, enzymes in their stomachs give the excreted coffee beans a special fragrance. Civet coffee can cost up to about 2,500 US dollars per kilogram due to its relative scarcity, making it the most expensive coffee in the world. Marman believes that the civet and civet coffee beans are nature's gifts. In the coffee plot, he notices that ants are eating the coffee beans. Some of the bushes have even withered and died. Today's harvest is very poor, which worries him. He hurries home. Marman calls a meeting of coffee growers to discuss ways of bringing the ant colonies under control. Producing and selling civet coffee is their main source of income, so they have to find a solution. After the meeting, Marman places excreted beans in the sunshine to dry. People used to collect them in the forest during the harvest season, but producers now keep the civets in pens, making it easier to collect their droppings. At dusk, Marman feeds the civets coffee beans, but there are barely enough for even one civet. He decides to go to the mountains tomorrow morning for more beans. People all over the world enjoying civet coffee have no idea of what Marman goes through to produce the beans. Nature has created many natural wonders on the islands of Indonesia. The island of Komodo is famous for the Komodo dragon, the world's largest lizard. During the mating season, the male dragons engage in a life and death struggle for mates. Kali Mantan, the largest island, holds the country's greatest secrets and richest treasures. Countless treasure seekers have come here, looking for precious gems and gold in the rainforest. Forty-two-year-old Jar Carney is from a poor area of high unemployment. Five years ago, he heard about job opportunities in Kalimantan, and one could feed his family 
and even become rich if he's lucky enough to find precious gems and gold. So he brought his family here, dreaming to strike it rich. Many migrant workers live in Jarkarni's village. Although they speak different dialects, they all talk about the same thing, becoming rich. They all dream of finding large quantities of gems and gold in the sand. So locals call this village the Village of Dreams. After lunch, Jarkarni takes his gems to the market in Banjar Masin, the capital of South Kalimantan, for processing. Shrewd dealers and customers gather here to trade. Few of the customers pouring over the expensive gemstones realize that they come from the village of dreams, just 20 kilometers away. Every week, Jarkarni brings his gems here for processing. He pays the polisher 50,000 rupees, equivalent to about five US dollars for each gem. He then sells them to gem brokers, who only deal in polished gems. In the afternoon, a trader comes to buy gems, and Jar Carney shows him what he has to offer. Several days ago, he found a rhinestone that he believes should fetch a good price. He sells all his gems for 200,000 rupees, or about 23 US dollars. Although he was expecting to get more for them, he's satisfied. In Indonesian, the country's name means our land and sea. For Indonesians, the nature, the land, and the sea are all they have. Nature provides humans with many gifts, and in return, the local people show their respect for nature. A secret and solemn ritual is about to begin on Bali. More than 80% of the population believe in Islam in Indonesia. But in Bali, the local people practice Hinduism with great passion in their own way. They believe in animism and the omnipresence of their gods. Kitat Darsar gets up at 5 a.m. as usual and begins to clean the family altar. is extremely important to the Balinese. Darsar's family relies on income from their farmland, which has been passed down from generation to generation. The mild marine climate here allows up to three rice growing seasons per year. Darsar goes to the fields every morning. He believes that rice symbolizes the purity of people's hearts. The fertile land usually yields a good harvest. Every family has a special altar dedicated to showing respect for the land.
Darsar is a devout Hindu. After returning from his field, he performs a simple ritual in his home lounge pavilion. The beliefs of the people here are closely linked to nature. They worship the sun god, water god, and wind god, and live in harmony with nature. Bali is a gift from nature. The island's special scenery and climate, all thanks to the marine environment, have nurtured the local people for generations. Today is a special day when a mysterious ritual to honor the sea will be held. It's early in the morning and the ritual is about to begin. Girls carefully place flowers in baskets made of palm fawns to be used as ritual offerings. The village men, women, and children all gather at the temple of the sea god. Worshiping the sea god is one of the most important religious rituals because of the special importance the sea has for the Balinese. Through their grandest ceremony, they show their respect for the sea that nurtures them. Darsar is one of the worshippers. He devoutly prays for the sea to bless him and thanks Mother Nature for giving them food and life and for fulfilling their hopes and dreams. The name Indonesia means our land and sea in the Indonesian language. The island country is crisscrossed by rivers and covered with tropical rainforests. All through the ages, people living here have formed their unique lifestyle. Please join us for part two of Glamorous Indonesia. <laughs>